Hi, my name is David Bodie for Tuts Plus, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a vacuum photo copy stand for holding your photos and 2D artwork perfectly flat for transition into the digital domain. So why do you need a vacuum photo copy stand? Well, if you've ever tried to transfer analog photos, printed photos, old actual photos, or 2D artwork into the digital domain, you know that taking pictures of these photos is a really fast way to do it, but keeping them flat is kind of difficult. You can put them under glass, but then you have all kinds of internal reflections to deal with, and just laying them out sometimes doesn't get it done because they don't lay perfectly flat, and that can give you problems with alignment and depth of field. So with the vacuum photo copy device, you'll be able to set your photos and your 2D artwork right on it, and it'll be sucked flat and make alignment and keeping your photos and your artwork perfectly flat really easy. So the concept here is pretty simple. You need some kind of container where you can create a vacuum, and we're going to leave one side of that container open and put a piece of perforated metal on there, and then you can set your photos or your 2D artwork right on here, and it's going to be sucked flat, and it's going to make alignment very, very easy. So to start, you're going to need some kind of container. Now, I've chosen to use an old computer case because it's just about the right size for what I want to build. It's sturdy, and they're pretty cheap. You can find these on Craigslist, or you know, people just throw these things out, so they're very easy to acquire. Now, you can also use any kind of rectangular device that's going to be relatively easy to make airtight. A little plastic container, a little wooden box, whatever you might have, or whatever's convenient. There's lots of different ways to do this. Now, you are going to need to modify this, so you are going to need some tools, and the type of tools you're going to need is going to depend on what the container is. Now, for me, I'm going to need some tools that are going to be able to cut metal, because I'm going to need to cut a hole in this big enough for this fan. So, I'm probably going to use a drill, maybe a jigsaw, and maybe a reciprocating saw or a sawzall to cut a hole in here, and that's pretty much all the fabrication that I'm going to need to do. Now, the next thing you're going to need is some kind of fan, and I'm going to use this 120 millimeter aero cool fan that I got a number of years ago. And this fan is a 12 volt fan, almost all computer fans are. It draws 0.6 amps, so if this isn't enough, I'll cut two holes and I'll use two fans, but I think this should be fine. Now, to power my fan, I'm going to use a 12 volt, one amp transformer here. The only thing you want to keep in mind with a power supply is that you match up the voltage. So this is a 12 volt fan, this is a 12 volt power supply, and on your power supply you want more amperage than you're going to draw with your fan. So this is a 0.6 amp fan, and this can supply up to one amp, so I should be fine there. Now, perhaps one of the most important pieces of this project is the piece of metal that you're going to be setting your artwork or your photos on. Now for this, I chose a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of perforated aluminum. This is 1 8 inch thick, so it's really pretty sturdy. It's very hard to bend, so photos and artwork is not going to be a problem. And it just so happens to be just about the right size for this computer case. So this is going to be a very easy project. And you can find these on Amazon in all kinds of different sizes and shapes. I believe this was around $18. So the first step for me is I'm going to gut this computer case. I'm going to get all of the components out of here. I'm going to clean it out, wipe it down, degrease it, make sure all the dust is out of here because I'm going to use caulk, and maybe some hot glue to fill in all the holes and that's not going to stick so well to grease and dirt. So the process of gutting the computer case is really pretty simple, and it only requires a Phillips head screwdriver. Basically, you just take the screws out, and you remove the stuff. Motherboard, video cards, anything that's screwed in, unscrew it, and rip it out. The only things that cannot be taken care of with a screwdriver are parts that are riveted in, but those are not too bad to deal with. All you need to do is drill out the rivets, and then those pieces, like this CD-ROM bay here, will pull right out. I usually like to drill with my vacuum cleaner running so that I can suck up all the metal shavings, and that way I don't have sharp little metal slivers everywhere. Right here I'm just marking the holes for where I'm going to make the cut with my jigsaw, and for this particular case it's going to be really easy. I just need to make two small cuts, and I used a jigsaw with a metal blade. It took me about 90 seconds. Super easy, it buzzed right through. Do make sure you wear ear and eye protection when you're using power tools. After the cut, I cleaned up the edges with a metal file, and then it was time to clean up the case. To clean up the case, I threw everything in the sink and just washed it with some warm water and some dish detergent that does a great job of degreasing everything. 
Then I just dried off all the moisture I could with a towel and then threw everything that was metal into the oven on 350 to drive off any extra moisture. I left it in there for about 10 minutes or so. There was a little bit of smoking because there were some stickers that I did not see on there and a little bit of hot glue from a previous DIY project, but it really wasn't too bad. It didn't ruin the oven or anything and it made sure all the moisture was completely gone. Now the next part of this project is pretty simple. It's just to block up all the rest of the holes in the case. And to do that, I just used some cardboard and some hot glue. Now initially I was going to use some caulk, but caulk takes a while to cure and hot glue dries in just a few seconds. So I found some nice clean cardboard from an old video card case and I cut it off. It's a pretty kind of arts and crafts kind of deal here. You basically cut stuff until it fits and then you glue it in place. And I used a high temp hot glue gun which is very, very hot. It will cause almost instantaneous burns on your skin if you get the glue on your skin. But because I'm gluing metal, it cools down really, really quickly. Now at this point you can see I'm using a little switch here. I decided to use a little DC switch to switch on and off the fan rather than having to unplug and plug the transformer in every time I wanted to turn the rig on and off. This is just a very simple single pull, single throw switch with a LED on it and I just cut a little hole and threaded it through, screwed it right down, hot glued it in place. Really, really simple. Initially, I had thought that I might try and screw the fan in place, but there wasn't any good spot to screw the fan to, so I just decided to glue it right to the case, and that was plenty strong, and I filled in the rest of the holes with cardboard and hot glue. The next step in the process was to wire everything up, so I cut the end off my transformer, and then I soldered up the fan and the power supply to the switch. It was a pretty simple connection. There is a shared ground, and then one side of the switch gets the positive from the power supply, and then the center terminal is the side that gets switched on, so that goes to the positive side of the fan. Once those connections were made, everything powered up and worked perfectly. Next, it was time to attach the aluminum to the side of the computer case. My plan was to drill some holes in the case and then just use some small metal screws and screw the aluminum directly to the case. Because the screws that I'm using have a pretty coarse thread, they bite right into the metal of the case really easily and they'll hold the piece of metal down really, really secure. The only problem that I had was in alignment the drill shifted a little bit, so when I did the initial screw down of the piece of aluminum, it was a little bit bowed, so I had to go back through and drill a few more holes, and I ended up drilling right down through the aluminum and into the case to make sure everything was aligned and that the aluminum was perfectly flat on the side of the case. I had to use one slightly larger screw because I ended up making one of my holes in the case just a little bit bigger, but that was no big deal. And I also used an impact driver to drive the screws through the aluminum because it's a pretty thick piece of aluminum and the screws were really tight going through. It was almost impossible to do by hand, so I used an impact driver to drive it through. If you don't have an impact driver, you just need to drill holes in the aluminum to make sure that the screw goes through and bites into the metal of the case. Once I had my screws all situated, I removed the perforated piece of metal, went back into the case, cleaned up all the holes with a little metal file, and I sucked up all the pieces of metal that were in there from drilling through the case and through the aluminum. Now once everything is put together, it's really a pretty simple process to use. You turn it on, you set something on it, it gets sucked flat. Now depending on the size of your particular build, you may need to plug up the holes around the photo or the artwork that you're placing on your vacuum photocopy rig. In this particular case, because it's a 12 by 12 piece of aluminum and I was testing it out with a 4 by 6 or smaller photo, just setting it on the aluminum did not provide enough suction to suck the photo flat. In fact, it didn't look like it was doing anything. But as soon as I added a few pieces of paper around the photo, basically plugging up the holes and creating more suction right around the photo, it stuck right to the aluminum. In fact, it stuck so well that I can actually get away with using this in vertical mode so I can set it on a table and shoot basically straight at it instead of having to shoot straight down on it. Now, not everything is going to work that well. Um, some pieces that you may be working on are going to be heavier, and so they're not going to be able to be sucked right down. And in that case, you're going to have to use it in horizontal mode. But if you need to get a little bit more suction, it's just a matter of adding some little pieces of paper around your photo to basically just plug up the holes and create more suction. 
that worked out really well. And in this particular case, it gives me some options on how I can use this vacuum photo copy rig. I can use it in horizontal mode, or I can use it in vertical mode. If you find that your particular rig is not providing enough suction, you may have to go back and plug up some more holes, or you may have to swap out fans and use a beefier fan or even two fans to provide enough airflow and negative pressure inside whatever container you've decided to make your project out of. In this particular case, this one fan looks like it's going to work really, really well, but if I do need to add an extra fan, it's just a matter of undoing four screws and gluing in another fan or swapping out the fan that I have in there for a more high performance fan. Again, thanks so much for watching. My name is David Bodie for tutsplus.com and I'll see you around.